So, but I do want to get, I do want to get, while it's, it's, it's fresh in my mind, I want to, I want to do this review of, of the movie Parasite. Uh, I think it's an important movie. I think it's very reflective of the time. Um, it, it's stunning. It's, it's a movie that has won all these awards. I mean, it's basically won everything. It, it won the, uh, the Cannes Festival a Top Movie Award. It won Foreign Film with all the, uh, it, all the various awards um, that, that are happening in the United States. Parasite won all kind of the foreign uh, film awards. And then in the Oscars, of course, it's the first foreign film, the first non-English film, to win the uh, Oscar for Best, for best uh, Film, for Best Director. So truly, uh, you know, from an awards perspective, a stunning, a stunning achievement. So I had to go see the movie. I had to find out what the deal is. And uh, I, so I watched it on the plane coming home. And, and somebody warned me that I should really watch it on a big screen and... They're probably right. The, the, the movie has some stunning visuals. And I think the movie's very visual in, in many respects. It's got a really, really bad theme. But it, 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 the movie uses visuals to portray the theme, which is really good filmmaking in, in that respect. Um, it is, I think generally, the movie's, uh, the movie's well made. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's well integrated. It took me a long time to figure out it took me really chewing on it for two days to figure out what the theme was. Uh, but the more I thought about the visuals, the more the theme comes into focus, the more you realize what the movie is trying to say. And it's basically trying to say what the director, in this case, is saying it's trying to say. So in this case, an artist's um, metaphysical value judgments are coming across, and he can explicitly state them. So uh, um, it's... it's uh, you know, the theme is more political, but it, but it's definitely a, a the theme is the theme is uh, is well, it's got a metaphysical aspect, but the theme is real. Um, and uh, you know, so do I recommend watching the movie before we get into the review? So a few things: one, the review is going to have spoilers, lots of spoilers, because I can't review the movie without really telling you what the movie is about and what happens in the movie, including including the end of the movie. The movie I'm talking about, for those of you joining late, is Parasite. Um, so, uh, including the ending of the movie, because I think the ending of the movie right, kind of ca encapsulates um, the, the theme and, and the, the whole sense, the whole sense of life and the whole, the whole perspective of the movie uh, is encapsulated by it. So there are going to be spoilers, so I warn you of that. We're going to go through a little bit of the storyline, and then I'm, I want to describe the visuals that I think are most significant in the movie. And again, I, I you know, if you're interested in, in cinema, I definitely encourage you to watch the movie. It's, it's got elements that are painful, and, and certainly there is a, a climatic scene that is extraordinarily violent. It's, it's short, it's short, but it's very violent um, and very shocking. Right, very shocking. You can kind of sense that it's coming, or, or something like it is coming. I don't think I quite expected the the rush of violence, but of course the the, the, the theme ultimately necessitates um, ultimately necessitates that kind of violent uh, that kind of violent climax. So, uh, so do I recommend the movie? I, I, you know, if you're interested in movies, if you're interested in cinema, then yes because I think it's a very interestingly made movie. I think, you know, the, the director here is, is very strong visually. He really has an understanding of space. He uses space really well. Uh, he conveys the fundamental theme of the movie through visuals, through um, uh, visuals and, and, and people's movement through the scenes, so it's. I think it's very powerful in that sense. The theme is a, is a negative one. It's not a pleasant movie. There's nobody, I mean, nobody good in the movie. There are no good guys in the movie. So there's nobody positive in the movie. Um, it, it's it's a, it's typically modern in that sense. It has no heroes. It has no characters you can look up to. It has no positive message. The message is is. Overall, absolutely, unequivocally negative. Um, 
it's it's a very um, at the end of the day a very depressing movie, a very you know negative sense of life uh, depressing movie. But again, if you um, if you like movies, if you like cinema, then it's interesting to watch. It's 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 an interesting how it plays out. It's interesting again what the director does uh, with the movie. I've only seen one other movie by this director. I didn't even realize it when I saw it. Only afterwards, when I was looking him up, did I realize. But I, I saw a movie years ago. A movie came out in 2013 called Snowpiercer, uh, which is a science fiction movie uh, that I saw. And what's interesting is the two movies have very similar themes. That is clearly this director is motivated by a particular view of the world, and that view of the world uh, comes across in both Snowpiercer, which is a sci-fi movie I can talk about after we talk about this movie. Um, and uh, the, uh, you know, so Snowpiercer and this, and Parasite have, have very, very, very similar themes uh, to the movies. Okay, so I, I wanna talk about, let's first talk about, I'll, I'll give you a quick summary of, of the, the story, right? The story of the movie, and then I wanna talk about the particular visual that if you're going to watch the movie, I would focus on. Now, again, I'm going to give you a lot of spoilers so to the extent that you, uh, you like to be in suspense in the movie, then you should probably leave the podcast right now and if you intend to watch the movie and not listen. Uh, if you've seen the movie, I think this, this will be interesting to you. And, um, and even if you're going to see the movie, but you don't mind spoilers, that is, the, the, the S, it's not that important to you. The, 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 that, you, that, that you don't know where the movie's heading, uh, then, uh, then I would encourage you uh, to continue listening to the movie. Um, all right, so here's, here's, a, here's the story in short. So you've got a, you've got a, a poor family, uh, father, mother, son, and daughter. They live in, uh, I guess what's fairly common in, in Korea, in, in the slums, they live in a basement type apartment with with a window looking into the street and windows play windows are very important in this movie window looking in the street but it's like on, it's it's like on the top right there's a window so you can look and you can see the feet of people you can see the people standing up but but the 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 uh, apartment itself is underground with only this one portion of the window above again very important that the apartment is underground and, uh, and that, that it generally is it's underground and that they're looking up through these windows. Anyway, they, they're all out of work. See, you've got the, the, the son and the daughter, uh, post, they seem like post-college. The son has also been in the army and they are out of work. And a friend, a rich friend of the son comes to him and says, look, I can, I, I'm tutoring this girl of a rich family in English. You can, call, you, you can take my job. I'm going off to uh, study abroad. You can, um, you can come and, and take the job. But in order to do that, you have to pretend to be a college student. You have to pretend to be wealthy. You have to pretend to be from a good family, and you have to pretend to, to have a college degree. So, they, so, he, so the son, to get, with the help of the, of the daughter, forges uh, all the documents necessary. He goes, gets, does the interview, and, and gets, gets, the, uh, gets the job. Um, then, you know, he discovers that the son, oh, so he gets a job at this rich family. Now, the rich family lives in a beautiful modern home, right? A beautiful modern home, which uh, we are told in the story was designed by some architect who used to live in it and has left. This beautiful modern home has big windows looking out into this amazing uh, garden and then out into kind of the, the, the meadows and the hills and it, just a beautiful view, right? So it's, it's just a gorgeous view and you can sit in the living room and look out into the spacious, beautiful thing. Again, big window looking out into this amazing garden. In this home lives a wealthy man, CEO of some company, his wife, a son and daughter. The son and daughter are younger. The daughter is in the last grade in high school, not very bright, needs help with her English. The son is a confused kid that they don't know what exactly to do with. 
And at some point, it becomes evident that, that uh, they, they would like to get him some kind of art teacher. So the, the, the poor kid suggests, oh, I know an art teacher. And he makes up the story about a girl that he knows who's an art teacher who went to this art academy and goes to these schools and goes here and there and is really, really good. And the, and the, and the, the wife, the rich wife, says, oh, you know, th this is great. Let's get her. So they, again, they forge her documents. And this is his sister. And he brings the sister into the house um, as now the teacher for the young son. Anyway, uh, they then manage to get the driver, the, the, the father's, the father, uh, uh, the rich father is, has a driver who takes him to work, takes him back. The family has a driver. And they, get, they manage to get him fired, and uh, they get their father to replace him. And then they manage to get, by, by again creating havoc and, and lying and deceiving through deception, they managed to get the housekeeper in this house, who's been in the house forever, including when it was owned by the architect, and they get her fired, and she is replaced by the mother. Now, in, no, in, in none of the cases, they say, this is my father, this is my mother. There are supposedly four different people who don't really know, who have some connection to one another, but don't really know each other, certainly not all members of one family. So here, the poor family has been very resourceful, has come up with a plan of deception in order to get their jobs. And there are elements of this that are funny, and it lead, indeed, the movie at the beginning of it seems like a comedy and seems like it's going to develop as a comedy. It becomes a tragedy very quickly, but it, 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 it is presented as a comic, comic drama, comic tragedy kind of a movie. And the beginning seems like this comedy where these poor people are basically deceiving the rich people, and the rich people are portrayed as kind of naive, kind of childish, kind of silly, kind of empty, uh, and easy to manipulate. Easy to manipulate. So not a very, not a very uh, admirable family. Um, very detached from reality, detached from the real world. So they're all in place. Everything is running smoothly. Until one day, the, the, the rich family goes off on a camping trip. And the housekeeper comes back. And the housekeeper comes back and she says, uh, there's something I have to do. Please let me into the house. So they let her in. And they discover that in the house, there is in, inside the cellar, there is a secret door that leads down into this shelter, basically a shelter built by this rich family just in case of a nuclear war with North Korea. So there's a shelter underneath the basement, and it's a secret door nobody knows about, the current owners. And in the shelter, the woman's, the old housekeeper that was kicked out, husband lives in there. And he lives there, and she basically feeds him off of the food from the rich family. And he basically stays there and never goes out. And he's there because he's lost his job. And the whole thing is the poor family lost their jobs. They've, they've worked and they've lost a job. The father has had many jobs over his career but keep losing them. The mother has had many jobs but keeps losing them. So it doesn't present them as, as uh, you know, as, as people who don't want to work. They clearly want to work. But they have no job. There is no option. And this one guy is stuck in the basement. And they have nothing. They have no property. They have nothing. She works as a housekeeper. She lives in the home. And her husband's in the basement. Right? Really, really, really weird. But basement, basement is important. Really deep, shelter, uh, you know, bunker basement. Really, really important. Again, visually, we'll get to that. Anyway, these guys, the, 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 the housekeeper and her husband, discover that the four people are actually related, that they're not separate, that they're actually one family. They threaten to tell the family so they can get their, so she can get her job back. Mayhem ensues during that mayhem. Basically, the housekeeper's killed. And, um, and then, while all this is happening, the family announces that they're coming back. And so everybody's scrambling. Uh, they're locked down in the basement with a dead, you know, the guy and, and, and his wife are locked down in the basement with, the, uh, with the, um, his wife that's now being killed in this, all this mayhem. The others scatter. They hide. 
uh, the housekeeper is the only one who's there and she, you know everybody else is hiding and the family comes in and they have they're clueless they have no clue that that these people have been partying in their house they have no clue that everybody's been there they have no clue that all this is going on uh, they're completely clueless as to what's happening which is a continuation of this idea that these rich people are completely clueless and have no have no uh, have no sense at all of what's going on anyway a bunch of stuff happens and we'll get to what happens in the meantime but but the housekeeper stays the other kids manage to escape the house now in the meantime massive rainstorm a, a monsoon happens and the the family the two kids and the father walk back they basically walk back from this rich family house to their their apartment and they have a part when they get to their apartment their apartment is completely flooded with water of course the water flows down and floods their apartment um, they land up going into shelter anyway they're in the shelter they get a call uh, from the rich woman and she says oh i want to put on a party tomorrow birthday party i need you all to come and she calls them all back to the house to set up this party okay so this party's happening and this is where it, this is where the climax happens and the violent climax happens anyway the guy in the basement pissed off that his that his wife is dead uh, upset at this family uh, sees them out there partying you know helping with the party and everything takes a kitchen knife and goes out and stabs the poor daughter right stabs the poor daughter basically she's bleeding out um, she's bleeding out I guess the some of the kids got hit so they're they're kind of waving and the, the rich father wants tells the driver who's the father of the girl dying that he wants him to drive the kid to the hospital forget about the the, the girl so the the rich guy shows complete disregard for anybody else's life for, for anything else going on there his kid just got hurt a little bit and he needs to rush him to the hospital at this point and again a, another issue I'll, I'll get to in a minute the the father the poor father takes the knife and stabs the uh, the rich guy and kills him he escapes lands up hiding from the police in this bunker they never find him he stays in the bunker uh and and the rest of the family they you know the daughter dies and the other two they just i'll tell you afterwards how it actually ultimately ends okay so that's kind of the outline of the story pretty random pretty crazy pretty insane pretty nutty action um so what's what's the theme of all this what's the theme well let's let's go back to a few of the images one poor family lives in a basement um with this little window they can see out into the street and their main concern with this window is that there's this drunk guy that always pees on their window right life really really sucks they're trying hard they're trying hard to the point of conceiving of plans to deceive people and and finagle them but they're trying hard they they've been fired from every job they can conceive of not because they were bad at the job but because that's the nature of the world you know businesses go out of business jobs get replaced and people lose their jobs and they're just they're just down on their luck so they live in this basement apartment the other family the other other poor family we know of live in a bunker the guy basically lives in a bunker under a rich people's home so and the rich people live in a house basically on top of a hill that has beautiful windows in which you can see the world and just just gorgeous spread and they are sheltered from the rain and they are sheltered from everything their house never floods their house is just beautiful right and it really is a beautiful house it's a, a modernly designed house they built the house it's basically a set house right they built a house for the movie for the purpose of the movie so in that sense every angle every layout every piece of furniture is thought out and this is one of the positive things about the movie it's all really thought out it's all figured out how it all lays out so upstairs is where the rich people live downstairs is where the poor people live and there's clearly an upstairs downstairs aspect downstairs upstairs there's a huge theme in this movie we're constantly going down the stairs to the cellar and up the stairs and down the stairs to to the basement apartment and up the stairs to the nice house the house itself has stairs but 
less important, but it's that rich people, poor people. Poor people live down, rich people live up, and the camera often spans up and down. Maybe the most illustrative, the two illustrative scenes of this, even so when the, when the uh, rich people go ba come back, come back uh, after they've gone camping and everybody is hiding, well, they're hiding under a table. Under. The rich people are above them on the sofa. You'd think they'd see them, but again, the rich people are clueless and portrayed as completely clueless. So they're under the sofa. They're, they're, they're on the sofa and under, and they actually have, you know, a... Uh, 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 Almost sex, I guess. They, they, they make out on the sofa, the, the, the rich couple. The kid is outside in a beautiful modern tent uh, while it's raining. And the poor people are under the table. The poor people are always under. The rich people are almost over. Then the scene where they walk in the rain from the rich house to their basement apartment, which they find flooded, is a beautifully filmed scene. It's pouring rain, and they go down a hill, downstairs, down a road, downstairs, down a road, downstairs, down, 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 down. It's clear that you've got the class, class hierarchy, class positioning, is central to this movie. That is the whole point of the movie, is a, a, a illustration, visual and in the story, of the relationships between classes, the relationship between the rich and the poor. It is striking how many times you see that, up, down, rich up, the poor are down. The rich are safe, the rich are warm, the rich are comfortable, the poor in the market. Not only do they return to the uh, basement apartment, is it flooded, but there's sewage spewing out everywhere. Nothing they can do about it. Nothing will stop it. They live in filth. They live with people urinating on their windows. They live underground. All the poor people in the movie live underground. They're forgotten. They're unknown. Nobody cares about them. Now, the movie doesn't romanticize poverty. The, the poor family are not good guys. They're clearly deceiving. They're clearly, and in one case, because they get the driver fired, and they get the, the, the maid fired, the housekeeper fired, they're clearly hurting other people in the same economic class that they are. So it's not that they are good guys. It's that they have no choice. Class is beyond choice. Class is what it is. The rich family is rich. We don't know how they got rich. We don't see the father working particularly hard. There's one scene where he's at the work. It's not clear he's sitting there making, you know, with a bunch of people surrounding him, kind of, I guess, making decisions. But there's nothing substantive about showing his work or showing the kind of decision-making he's making. The poor families are poor. And nothing they do, nothing they do changes the fact that they're poor. They get the jobs, they've got money, but they screw it up, they mess it up, they're discovered. Bad stuff happens, and back to poverty they go. So, it's inevitable. The poor, poor, the rich, rich. And there's a sudden appeal to a theme like this in, in, South, in Korea. Because Korean society was very, very, um, what's, the, what's the term, uh, feudal, really well into the 20th century. Clear classes, you're born into classes, you're born into a particular class, it's, it's almost a caste system, not quite, but if you watched Mr. Sunshine, which I highly, highly, highly recommended, and you should have watched, you could see the class structure of Korean society well into the 20th century. And it's reflected now in the 21st century in Parasite. At least that is the understanding that the movie conveys about the classes. The rich are rich because they just are. The poor are poor because they just are. And nothing the poor do has any chance of bringing them out of 
poverty. They are doomed to that. And indeed, the conflict, the primary conflict that happens is the conflict between the two poor families, the housekeeper who comes back and her husband in the basement, and this new, that is the, the, the pie, as the movie sees it, the pie is so limited that the poor families are fighting over a very limited pie. They're fighting over the little crumbs that the rich leave them. The two poor families have to struggle to survive at each other's expense. They cannot both exist off of the little crumbs that the rich family sends their way. So not only are the poor poor, but they're all fighting against each other and eating each other up and damaging each other's chances of success. Yeah, I mean, uh, somebody in the chat mentions one scene in the movie where the family, before they get these jobs with the rich people, they, they're trying to fold pizza boxes to make a living. So the pizza company is willing to give them a pizza box to fold. So they're folding these pizza boxes, the whole family sitting and they're folding pizza boxes. And they get 25% of them wrong. They damage them. So they can't even do that properly. So these are not, again, the poor are not romanticized here. It's life sucks. And the thing is that life sucks for the rich as well. The rich are, are portrayed as naive, easily exploited, easily taken advantage of. The rich are portrayed as suffering, as ultimately suffering from the actions of the poor and from their own actions. So the father, the rich father, is killed in the end. And, and that's important because I think the theme of it, the theme of the movie is that inequality or, or class structure, right, the, 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 the vast differences between the classes, only results in horror for both the poor and the rich. So class inequality results in horror for both rich and poor. But class is also inevitable according to the movie. Class is inevitable according to the movie. So I think, I think the movie is well made, it's well acted, the, the particular issues are well dramatized, the sense of the movie gives of the inevitability of class, the inevitability of disaster, the inevitability of, the inevitability of um, class, well, of, of, of the horror, of murder, of, 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 of bloodshed. It's all inevitable. There's nothing to do about it. The movie offers no alternatives, no options, no outs. Indeed, at the end of the movie, the son, the poor son, who's schemed this whole idea up and is constantly a schemer, he writes to his father, who's stuck in the, remember, in the... In the um, um, you know, bunker but underneath the house. He writes to the father, he writes this letter saying, you know, one day I'm going to go down, I've got a plan, I'm going to go study, I'm going to go uh, work hard, I'm going to make a lot of money, I'm going to buy the house uh, that all this happened in, this rich house, and I'm going to free you from the basement. I'm going to free you from the bunker. And there's this dreamlike scene where he comes into the house and the father comes out of the bunker and they hug, and then the camera cuts away from that and brings it back into the basement apartment where the kid is writing. And it's obvious. That's never going to happen. That's just a dream. That's just another one of this kid's fantasies. At some point, the father, the poor father, tells the kid, don't plan. There's no point in planning. Everything sucks. Everything fails. Whether you plan or you don't plan, failure is inevitable. The unexpected always happens. Good stuff cannot happen to us. So the movie is saying there is no nobility in the world. It doesn't matter if you're poor or you're rich. If you're poor or you're rich, in a sense, you're born into that. There's nothing really you can do about that. 
There's no sense of mobility in this movie. The rich are rich, the poor are poor. They stay that way. And to the extent that those classes exist, everybody is going to suffer. So yes, it's very deterministic in the end. Choices don't matter. Um, so if you, you could say inequality or, 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 or class differences, inevitably, deterministically, lead to horror for both the rich and the poor, for everybody involved, for people in every class. So there you have it. That is my review of the movie. It is a terrible theme. It is a depressing movie. It is a depressing idea. It's, uh, it's got nothing to recommend it. And it. But it's very indicative, again, of a culture, particularly of Hollywood, where inequality is, they obsess about it. The left obsesses about inequality. This movie reinforces all of their most basic primary ideas and primary beliefs, their idea and a kind of determinism, their ideas of lack of social mobility, their idea that you're born into a particular class and that is inevitable, and their idea of a tragic, a tragic, the inevitability of tragedy, the inevitability of tragedy. So depressing, um, horrible as social commentary, really, really bad, but very well made. And again, I, you know, if you see the movie, pay particularly attention to this idea of upstairs, downstairs, this idea of above and below, the superiority of some to others, and that, that positioning that is very visual. So it's, it's, this is a good movie for those of you who are studying cinema, for those of you who want to see how to use visuals, how to use visuals in order to tell a story. Tell a story. Using the Super Chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, yourronbrookshow. And, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...